All right, everyone, welcome to this introduction to mechanics of materials. Throughout this course, I will be focusing on the main concepts and ideas that you will encounter in your study of solid mechanics. And just like in my statics introduction, uh, taking a look at the three branches here, we have again rigid body mechanics, which is both statics and dynamics. And then we also have deformable body mechanics, which is what mechanics of materials is based around. And lastly, we have fluid mechanics, which will be for a later study. And now, of course, you might be asking what exactly is mechanics of materials, uh, maybe compared to like statics or just rigid body mechanics. So this class is basically a mechanics branch that studies the internal activity or effects of stress and strain in a solid body. So as previously mentioned, this class pretty much focuses on the deformation of bodies as well as the new concept of stress, all under applied external forces. And so now taking a look at the definition of stress, stress is simply the force per unit area from any applied external forces. And so for example, normal stress sigma is equal to force divided by area, which is a force per unit area. And notice that A is the cross-sectional area of the solid. And so that's how we define stress mathematically. And the strain is pretty much the measure of a body's deformation. And here we mathematically define strain as epsilon, which is equal to the change in length over the original length. And so of course, delta L is the new length L minus the original length L naught. And so this can simply be rewritten as L minus L naught over L naught. And I'll be further elaborating these concepts uh, later in the video. And we will also go over some simple examples for you to get a better understanding of these. And now why is it important? Well, we know that in reality, any materials that become in contact with forces, especially those that are large enough, will tend to deform due to those forces. And adding on to that, real world structures will of course depend on the strength and durability of the materials. And next, it's important to consider the deformation of bodies uh, during the design process. And lastly, I just wanna point out that a thorough understanding means that we have little to no mechanical failure. And of course, as engineers, that's what we aim for. All right, so now taking a more in-depth look at the concept of stress. Again, stress is defined as force per unit area. And remember that this force is any applied external force onto an object. And normal stress is usually represented as sigma. And for basics, I'll just be focusing on normal stress for this video. So again, from the definition, sigma is equal to force F over area A. And of course here, sigma is our normal stress. F is the magnitude of the applied load or force. And A, the cross-sectional area of the solid. And now say we have a solid cylinder as shown. And here the solid is sitting on a surface. And now let's say we apply a downward compressive force. And this surface highlighted in orange is the cross-sectional area of the cylinder. And so based off this force, we generate a normal stress sigma. And now if we define our coordinates as x and y, just like so, then this normal stress will be represented as sigma y y. But of course, since the force is in the downward direction, the negative y direction, this will actually be negative sigma yy. And so this represents a compressive stress. And now let's say we have a different case with another cylinder. Let's say we now apply a pair of tensile forces onto the cylinder, just like shown. And again, since we have the same coordinate system as before, this stress will be sigma yy. And for this force on top, sigma yy will be positive since the force acts upwards. And for the bottom force, since it 
x downwards, this will be negative sigma yy. And so that can be written as sigma yy equals negative f over a. And once again, remember that the area is the cross-sectional area of the cylinder as shown. So we're essentially looking at the area of a circle here. So that is simply pi r squared, where r is the radius of the circle. And so I'll just go ahead and draw it on the circle. And another way we can write this is by using the diameter of the circle. So that'll simply be pi over 4 times d squared. And remember that radius is simply half of the diameter. So now moving on to the concept of strain. Again, it is simply defined as a measure of a body's deformation. And it is represented by epsilon. So now, for example, say we have a simply supported beam as shown. If there is a load applied to the center of the beam, assuming that the force is large enough, then of course we expect the beam to deflect or deform as shown. And so obviously we see a change in the body's geometry. And hence we can measure this deformation using strain. And so epsilon equals L minus L naught, which is change in length, over L naught, which is the original length of the solid. And this can also be simply represented as L2 minus L1 over L1. And of course, also simply delta L over L naught. And so on the sketch on the left here, let's just say that this change in length is 0 0.02 meters. And now for another example of strain, let's imagine a cantilever beam just like this, where it is fixed to a wall on the left and has a axial force applied on the right. So due to this force, we will expect this beam to sort of stretch to the right or deform to the right, just like so. And now let's define this beam's length. Over here on the right, this will be the change in length, delta L. And then here we have the original length, L naught. And then in blue will be the final length, L. So as you can see, hopefully this is a much clearer representation of strain along with its quantities. And so once again, we can find the strain by knowing these quantities. So epsilon will be equal to L minus L naught over L naught. Now let's say the units for this example are millimeters. Then that means that our answer for strain will be in millimeters per millimeter since we're essentially dividing length by length. And so this basically means that the units for strain are essentially unitless since of course millimeters by millimeters cancel out. But of course, you do have the freedom to write your answer as either unitless or unit of length per unit of length.